Hold up. here and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. So we're gonna continue where we left off right after the uh, that 42 minute video that I uploaded well not too long ago which is I think one of the longest videos I made in this channel but pretty sure I'm not really sure if I'm going to reach that mark again with this one. We'll see because I really want to see what what this episode has in store for us and of course for you guys to see what's going on in the next episode of Doki Doki Literature Club which is right now so before we begin this video be sure to leave a like share it with a friend and of course if you're new to the channel please subscribe it really does help me out and click on the bell notification on what videos I upload so possibly right after this I'm gonna go back into playing Minecraft so uh, you guys know the drill you know what time it is it's Doki Doki time Alright, so we left off with the four girls here, uh, it's Monica, so I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice rec reciting them in front of each other. No, no way, Monica, it's too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no, don't worry, I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Ahaha, <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she's in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before or is she simply unnatural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori really looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes her recitation. Well, I'm glad we don't have that or have that in the game because that would definitely be too much to ask for, I guess. I don't know. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to get a, to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Wah! Yuri, Yuri is fired up all of a sudden. Yuri cr clutches a sheet of paper in between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quite quickly over to the podium. Yeah, quick, quietly, I mean quickly, I'm so sorry. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. We can do it, Yuri. It's called... It, uh, after image of a crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of fierce and confident woman. <coughs> Excuse me. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a real glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances at around her as if she were withered even herself. I... It's up for me to save the situation. If I'm the first to start plotting. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we want to, uh, we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds a poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Uh, looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one is called Mine Meadow. Ah, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, that's a lot harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself like in front of a mirror or into your own head. 
it's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. Ah, uh, recitals, huh? Oh man, recitals. Um, actually, I have a fair, sh fair story of that one. Whenever it comes to reciting stuff, especially at school or a recital at stuff, like I sometimes get a little bit nervous, so I just overcome my fear and then just face in front of them and then just just do it. I mean, if you if you have something to you know just just do just do it. I mean, really, you have to you have to do it. <laughs> yeah, so. Wise words, just do it. Thank you, Shia LaBeouf. I see, I see. Okay then, Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem ain't aimlessly cheer cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Finn liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you very, really nicely. But it might be that other poems won't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery won't work as well. They might need a little fo more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay, now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm, don't make me go before Finn. It's not like he can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Finn lower everyone's standards a little before I, might, I have to do it. Natsuki, it's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go, what, go with what I wrote for today. Stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it too much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, Th that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthusiast, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's not Suki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up, they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be w way easier. I can put whatever face I want for other people. When it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for this festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming though. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what's of what it's like now. Make sure to pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time of what you'll be reciting. Jeez. <laughs> oh man, this is going to be a bit of a, uh, a tough thing, doesn't it? 
Oh man, more more practice, just like how it was like me back in high school, back in my previous days at school, I guess. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she noticed some noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Finn, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little bit strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed some noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a eraser, a rubber eraser, up and down at her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm surprised I'm not the only one asking you, Finn. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked out to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she's she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask you if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her, and I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she's... She, maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe that may be the eighth thing on her mind is you, Finn. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? She's been much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an it's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. <laughs> okay, I think I know where this is going, maybe. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not like any different now than it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Finn. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's how that's just how she is when she's around you. Um Alright. Ah, I said it too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, but so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch, her, I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit down myself, myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the only, the only one behaving out of the ordinary. There's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Hey, you. Eh? Oh, hey, Natsuki. What's up? I look up to see Natsuki next to me. Are you just gonna sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't much time, so... Ah, sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. It's not like I'm worried. I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of manga in her hand. That's right. Something just came up for a minute. But well, we can get started now. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez, now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, then you just tell me to leave you alone and I will. I mean, assuming you didn't feel like talking about it or anything, she practically mumbles at the last part. Now I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. S Sayori? Thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today, but she didn't want to admit, to it, admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if people if something happened to her. Oh, Natsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. 
Yeah. Then in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she would go to, right? Well, I, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably won't. She probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, I, that's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly. If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. Yeah, I should have thought of that that way from the start. Natsuki fiddles with the book she's holding in her hands. She she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Ah, don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's not normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so I was not. <laughs> well, she asked it, so kinda. That 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 went into a a weird thing right there, I guess. But all right. Jeez, if you're so fine, then let's hurry and get started already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, dot dot. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she's talking about. So you're talking about with Sayori. All right. Time for the usual order, top to bottom. Yeah, top to bottom. Let me uh, let me uh, do something here real quick. All right, just save my game. So let's go for Sayori first, of course. The one and only Cinnamon Bun. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Finn. Er, thanks. <laughs> Uh, Sayori, you have been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? Eh? Of course. Everything is fine. I'm just a little bit tired today. A, a little tired today. <laughs> Sorry. I, I can read, guys, okay? Don't worry. I can read. I can read. Do you want to nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see faces on your... I want to see <laughs> smiles on your face. Faces on your smile. Okay. <laughs> Faces on your smile. I think that might be the one of the terrible quotes I've ever made so far in this in this in this channel. But all right, sure, why not? Well, all right. Hey Finn, I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing poems like the way Yuri does, or even Natsuki. But in the end, yeah, I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You don't want to get closer with anyone else? Wait, of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to put sometimes put up with me. I have sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when you're when thinking about you. Sayori? N no, Finn. I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori is tr is tr has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everything else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori? Oh no, she's she's crying. What's, what's going on? Glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori, I probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer, cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Finn. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little er, a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. Alright. Um, I don't know why that happened, but... I'm literally not crying right now, but... <sighs> uh, 
friends. Keep it together, Finn. Keep it together. I know this is a game. This is a game. Keep it together. We're, we're still going to, to do this. I know we're still going to do this, but... Maybe it's because the words are kind of shuffled around and stuff. I didn't notice that or something, but... I was definitely gonna go for Sayori, but... <sighs> all right, let's uh, let's 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 keep going, guys. All right, let's keep going. All right, Natsuki, you're next. This one's all right. All right. Well, yeah, it doesn't blow me away, but there's nothing I really hate about it. It's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of. <laughs> Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone so er fluffy spend... What? How can someone so er fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging uh, around a dead weight. Uh, that's a, that was a little unnecessary. Fluffy? Fluffy, I, um... If you're thinking about fluff, maybe. Just, you know, being sweet and stuff, that's... That's that's 100% fine by me, I mean... I like fluff. But, think of it this way. If it wasn't for me, she would probably just fly away like, uh... Like letting go of a balloon. You could say we, ta we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. I'll be your beach. Beach. Okay. Your... Don't say it like that, guys, alright? Pronunciation, again. Please. Please, not the pronunciation, alright? Just... You get the title, alright? Let's just, let's just get into it. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with your brilliant, brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt, melt away before the sunny glow. It'll be the beach that washes your worries away. It'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. It'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea. And let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. Remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lip lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap. In a way, thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Huh, it's not bad. Alright. Uh, one more second. Let me just get a uh, another obligatory water break. So I can <coughs> speak again. Yeah. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I decided. So I, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. The beach, okay, beach, beach. Uh, don't don't get into the wrong context, guys. So I decided to write about the beach first, and came up with a message later. Yeah, well. It's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized, we kind of wrote about the same thing. She wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it or whatever. Ugh, you can really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic, then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. <clears throat> well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being a bit of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. 
Alright, I guess she's done. Alright, next is... Yuri. Dot dot dot. Well done, Finn. You definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this, it's a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first, but now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I can't really disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore, but it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. But it's been fun getting to know everyone in the writing, and I guess doing some writing myself. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Finn? Eh? Well, you know how I, how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just opinions, you know? As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Eh? Why me? Well, you're always sophisticated with your writing and I have the most advice to share. Is that so? <laughs> dot dot dot. Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Eh? For me to have someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri, it's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to those sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked? Yuri. What What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. Do you want to share your poem now? Okay. Here. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chastically meets the surface, under a clear blue sky and expanse of bliss, but beneath gray rolling clouds an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can build a sand castle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick your foundations until you give in, or will a sudden wave send you chip crashing in? crashing down in the blink of an eye. Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet, we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes wish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. Therapeutic? I, I can't say that word. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. I turn back, I abandon my peace to a road to at the shore. Rift. Wait, so that says rift? Yeah. Wait, no. Drift forward. Okay, it says drift. Drift forward and I, ref and I return to Earth forevermore. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about. I did my best to make a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, Natsuki already told me about it. She did? She didn't say anything weird, did she? <coughs> I'm sorry. She just wanted us to write about the same topic again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she wanted to do something like that. She probably wants to show off. It's not like, it's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But... Well, I suppose it's not too bad to write about something simple on the on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know. It's good for me to to call my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I disagree. I I agree, not disagree. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my words! What am I doing? What am I saying? Thanks for sharing. And the last and the least, Monica. Hi, Finn. Alright, next up, we have Monica. Hi Finn, have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Sorry, my nose is kinda nosy or something, sometimes. 
okay, no pressure, but whatever, what, whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Dot dot dot. It's real. It's pretty good. It real. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one, like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. Aww, that's 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 cute, Monica. That's that's that's, that's very cute. I I uh, really appreciate that. <laughs> that kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Ah, uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, and don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Er, alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who tells who know who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift in the sky, victims of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight star, twilight sky, twilight, twilight, chrono. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall and fall, and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her hand. I look at her eyes and find no one, no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I'm not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat. I pick up a gust of wind. That's a pretty good poem, I gotta say. That's a, it's a, it's a good poem. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. <coughs> Another water break. There we go. Whew. Not to get too sophistic. Uh, not to get too philosophical or anything but it was kind of on my mind so that's what i wrote about you see i never really put much thought into it in a way it's almost paradoxical because if we had all the answers wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning you know there's one thing i noticed it seems like everyone else in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad and happy <laughs> are you surprised i mean if everything was okay we wouldn't, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Haha, <laughs> yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid that it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put m so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of telling because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it'll it it will make you want to continue proving. 
It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Aw, nice. Alright, let me, uh... Uh, alright, let me, uh, save that. Actually, no, you know what? How about now? Okay, you three, we're all done sharing poems, right? Yeah, we're done sharing poems. That's the, uh, pretty sure that's going to be the end of the day. The end of the day, I'm pretty sure it will be. Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Ooh. Stagnating air is common, foreshadowing that something's terrible about to happen. I'm pretty sure this this episode will definitely be it. This will definitely be it, please. Uh, not poor Sayori. Wait, hold on a sec, guys. Oh, yeah. Off here. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the things to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Ah, no. First of all, miss... <laughs> first of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with, not with Sayori. Bruh. Sayori, I mean, Natsuki. Dang it, I don't know what else to say now. I'm... I'm Kinda of messed up here, I'm so sorry. And second, she's kind of avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Who? That curious expression coming from Sayori from from Yuri of all, of all people. Why am I keep saying Sayori all of a sudden? <laughs> Why? Why am I saying Sayori all of a sudden? That's 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 just weird. Alright, let's uh, let's continue. Calm down guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right, Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted! As for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembly all poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, uh, Yuri, you can, uh, um, huh? Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I, I'm useless. Oh no, Yuri, no. No, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Um, dot, dot, dot. Now, Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, I, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case, but if, <laughs> but if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have to, you have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I, I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Her mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Finn. The one who is truly useless! <laughs> the one who is truly useless. Yeah, that's me. I'm useless. I got nothing else to do in life. Other than making YouTube videos and collecting action figures in life, I guess. So, yep, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm best at. Truly useless, other than 
making YouTube videos, being lazy, and of course collecting all this stuff here. So, <laughs> oh man, I'm so hilarious. I'm joking, guys. Right? I'm, I'm joking. I'm not. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tests to handle. It would probably it would probably go a long way to give one one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would really appreciate. I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's. <coughs> Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah. Oh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if I recall Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Finn may not be around if you only make him, to make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the de decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds like you're. Sounds like. Sounds more like you're just making excuses, Finn. To what are you saying? It'll be extremely met meticulous work, and baking isn't. Just what do you think, guys? Guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Finn to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm pretty sure he's interested in... He literally just said, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez, can we just settle this already? Yeah, Finn, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, uh, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm going to go with... Oh my goodness. So again, we've got Natsuki, Yuri, Monica, and Sayori. It's gonna be a tough choice. This is gonna be a tough choice. Let me uh, save that. Uh, you know what, right here instead gonna go with why do I why do I keep on thinking about Sayori anyways am I that kind of careless like I don't know I mean it's just a game so I mean what they say is right I shouldn't rely on Sayori that much but I have loyalty. That's my problem. So we got decorations for for Yuri, baking for Natsuki, pamphlets for Monica. I don't know. It's gonna be a tough choice for me. Should I go with Yuri? I don't know. Let's 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 see. Well, I'll probably be most help be most useful helping out Yuri. M me? Are you serious? Why would you... Natsuki? Okay, I, I think I'm not really sure if I'm going the right route here. I mean, decoration's not bad. I mean, I've been a propsman, so... I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no, I was just saying... Ugh, so you'll be helping Yuri then, Finn? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah, I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So is that everything we need to go over? Yeah, I think that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word. I suppose I'll be looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Finn? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. 
That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Hmm. Natsuki. What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't do anything. No, no. That's not what I meant at all. Uh. Yuri anxiously glances in between everyone and Ruby. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Finn picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I ever had. They really go. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that. So, so. I get it. I get it. I'm kind of surprised though. Why? Um. Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I say so said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back, uh, taken aback by Yuri's words. <coughs> Excuse me again. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kinda appreciate it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. Huh? You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the last part of the whole event. Ah, uh, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best, but with that, there's nothing more for today, so I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up her things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out of the door as they chat between each other. Um... Oh. Hello, Yuri. Well, uh, what's... um... What's going on, Yuri? Um... Eh? I turn around. Sorry, I realize that I don't have any way of ca contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Shouldn't I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way. Yes. Alright then. You and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? Isn't that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the only I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Ah, uh, I suppose that makes sense. Or if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it wouldn't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Finn. I think that will make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. W wait, you don't actually think of that, do you? Um, I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you have chosen me. You're forgetting the reason. You're forgetting that one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But Yuri thinks to herself in an extremely tense expression. Of course, just just gonna help with the uh, the decoration. Sorry, my uh, footage caught off on that one, but. Again, I have to help much on the decorations, so there's nothing to worry about, right? Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Eh? I didn't realize I'm telling you I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? Hi. Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it were, if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that I relax, that and says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really forward, and I'm and I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out of the door, and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri is going, going to be coming to my house on Sunday. My xanity shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might have ended up happening when we were outside of school. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen, happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. Until then, I won't be able to take my mind off it. Seriously, I can't wait.
Okay, this is going to be a little bit weird. Oh, Sunday. Alright. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and in, and also an intimate personal person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was the extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I already knew learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and Monica said, is it really for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Alright, alright. Is everything okay now? Hopefully. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. That was just quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange for her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. <laughs> Oh, what? Oh. Oh. All right. <sighs> that that nearly gave me a heart attack. I thought I thought that. Oh, Sayori. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, thank God. Oh, Sayori. Yes, you're safe. Hi Finn, I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, haven't you? Ah, uh, I guess you're right. It's been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she she's had for years now. <laughs> If you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I ended up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori had left by the time we decided to that last meeting. Monica told me, it's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, oh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you... Aren't you going to help? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. So Yuri stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing after you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well, so... Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Finn. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I can... <coughs> if I didn't get so weak and... and, and, and ex, ex, accidentally express my feelings. If I didn't make that, much, make that stupid mistake, then you would be... Then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori! Grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? 
I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Finn. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? Why are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> you're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Finn? Guess I have no choice this time. Thing is, I've really had I I had really bad depression my whole life. Didn't you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by spending them by having them spend it on me? That that's what it feels like. And that's why I want to make everyone happy, without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I was long to her? Is she really is she really wants so badly for me to not just think about her? Why Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you all never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I wouldn't have done everything I could support to you. Even if there's only much I could do, I wouldn't have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All I have to do is just tell me. You don't understand at all, Finn. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be care about, cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted, wanted so badly for you to make friends with anyone else, everyone else. Helping everyone will be, er, helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with anyone in the club. It feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting. That's what I, that's what I'll do. No, Finn. There's nothing, nothing at all. The only thing I could help is if everything could be, could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally, show, I finally showed you what I'm, what a horrible person I am. Tears streak down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. I was punished by my heart in a way I couldn't understand. And now you came here because I made you hurt too. It's just weak and selfish. That's all I am. That's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because they deserve everyone. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time I pulled her into a tight embrace. Ah, Finn. Sayori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, that's just a bonus. <coughs> but please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way, Finn. Sayori isn't hugging me back, despite my arms being wrapped around her. Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Finn, I... Sayori barely manages, manages to speak in between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is to hear that, to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let it, to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything you need me to do, a little bit, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me and her. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Finn. The only time when I'm not feeling nothing is when I feel in pain. But their hugs are so warm. And that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, ah, it's what I want, I promise. I... I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the day, the whole day here, I would. Of all the days, this has to be one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel- No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I would- I would- I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along to and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if and I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah, uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. I tried my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright, I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I feel my, I find myself fe still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're, go we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should focus what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Alright. Alright, 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 alright. Let's put it here. Okay guys, um, let's, let's end it here. I nearly thought I was going to have a heart, heart attack or a, a, a jump scare or anything like that. But man, that, that, that part of the game really kind of broke. Like really, poor, poor Sayori. But don't worry, guys. I'm I'm okay right now. I just uh, get my water bottle. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, there. Got my uh, water bottle. Let's uh, let's go. So, guys, that's uh, basically the end of this episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. So, um, if you guys really want me to, you know, get more into it, of course, because we're definitely in the the uh, good stuff so uh, yeah uh, like I said in the beginning if you really like this video go ahead I mean really does help me a lot so uh, before I end this video be sure to leave a like share it with a friend and of course if you're new to the channel please subscribe really does help me out and click on the bell notification on what videos I upload so uh, yeah then that's basically it for this episode of Doki Doki Literature Club and uh, yeah so Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay awesome. Love you all. Finn the Diamond Knight signing off. See you guys next time.